Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on conducting an exploratory factor analysis using SPSS. In counseling research, we use an exploratory factor analysis, or EFA, when we want to determine the underlying factor structure that exists in a set of variables. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data editor in SPSS, I have item one, item two, all the way through item 10. And let's assume that these items represent the responses to individual items on a survey. So for example, for the first record here, the response to item one would have been eight, the response to item two would have been one, and so on. So in this situation, we would use an EFA to see if any of these items group together into what we refer to as a factor. So for instance, we may believe that item one, two, three, and four measure one construct, and item five, six, and seven, another, and item eight, nine, and 10, a third construct. And that is the case here with the way I've arranged these data. So if we take a look at the variable view, we can see the name, item one, item two, item three, but the label here, you see I have it marked depression one through four, anxiety one through three, and mania one through three. So items eight, nine, and 10 correspond here to mania symptoms, items five, six, and seven to anxiety symptoms, and we have depression symptoms being measured by items one through four, or at least that's what we believe, and that's why we would conduct an EFA to determine if that's correct. So going into this analysis, we have a theory already in place. So with that in mind, I'm gonna to move to analyze dimension reduction and factor to open the factor analysis dialog. Now the first thing we're gonna do is to move all 10 items over to the variables list box. Under descriptives, I'm gonna add univariate descriptives to statistics and to correlation matrix I'm going to add coefficients, significance levels, determinant, and KMO and Bartlett's test of sphericity, and click continue. And that brings me to extraction. At the top here under method, you can see we have a combo box. And if we click the down arrow, we can see that there are several different factor analysis methods available in SPSS. The default is principal components analysis. And this method is descriptive. This method will transform data in order to create a description that is simplified. And it can be used to reduce the number of variables. For an exploratory factor analysis, I'm gonna be using a different method, principal axis factoring. This model assumes that a causal model exists and is used to generalize to the population. So in this case, instead of 10 items, where we have an idea of how we believe these items are gonna load, say that we had 100 items, and we wanted to re reduce this instrument from 100 items to 10 or 20 items. In that case, we would likely use a principal components analysis. But for an EFA, we would often use a principal axis factoring method. So I'm gonna select principal axis factoring, and then under display, I'm gonna add the scree plot. The unrotated factor solution is already checked off by default. And here, I'm gonna allow SPSS to extract the factors based on the eigenvalue. And the eigenvalue we typically use is one, and it is the eigenvalue that's in this text box by default. So click continue here. For rotation, there is a process to selecting the correct rotation, and I have separate video content that covers that. For now, I'm gonna select the Veramax rotation, which is a popular rotation for use in an exploratory factor analysis. I'm gonna click continue. And then under scores, I'm gonna make no changes. We can save factor scores as variables if we want, but I'm not gonna do that. And under options, 
I'm going to leave missing values set to exclude cases listwise. But down here under coefficient display format, I am going to change the default uh, sorted by size. I'm going to check off and suppress small coefficients. I'm also going to check off. The absolute value below default setting is 0.1 and I'm going to leave it set at that and click continue. So now I'm ready to conduct the FA. I'll click OK. And we can see we have descriptive statistics at the top, the first table, mean, standard deviation, and the sample size. Then moving down to the correlation matrix, what we're interested in here mostly is looking for high levels of correlation. So any correlation that has a value, an absolute value, greater than 0.8 would be a red flag in most cases. We could see we have a few values here that are close to that. But again, this is an exploratory factor analysis, so we would assume that these items that are supposed to be measuring the same construct will be highly correlated. So even if I had a few values here that had a correlation score above an absolute value of 0.8, I wouldn't necessarily be concerned. Rather, I would still move on and interpret the rest of the output. So moving down to the bottom of the correlation matrix, we can see the determinant here is equal to 0 0.002. The value just needs to be greater than 0 0.00001. So we're okay there. Looking at the kaiser meyer olkin measure of sampling adequacy, the KMO, we're looking for a value here greater than 0.5, but a value greater than 0.6 or 0.7 would be much better. In this case, 0.695 is the value, and that's pretty good, fairly close to 0.7. For Bartlett's test of sericity, we can see here that we have a statistically significant value, and that's what we want to see for an EFA. The alpha would be set at 0.05. So any value below 0.05, and we would reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, we would reject the null hypothesis and move on with the interpretation. Moving down to the total variance explained table, you can see here on the left under factor that there are 10 factors listed. The number of factors listed here will be equal to the number of variables that we loaded in the model. You can see, however, that the number of factors extracted in this case is just three. It's equal to three. And these have eigenvalues greater than one. That's how we set the extraction. These three factors account for 78% of the variance as indicated here under cumulative percentage. Moving down to the scree plot, we're really looking for what's called the inflection point where this line bends sharply. In that case, you can see it's down here. So really this is the same information as what we have in the table above except expressed in a chart. We have three factors. All these factors have an eigenvalue greater than one. And then we have the remaining factors that have eigenvalues that are less than one. Then moving down, we have factor matrix, but we're gonna skip down to the rotated factor matrix. And here is where we can see the results of the testing of our theory. So we have these 10 items on this survey, on this instrument, and we believe that four measure depression, three measure mania, and another three measure anxiety. And we can see from how the rotated factor matrix has the loadings displayed that this, these results seem to support our theory. We have strong factor loadings for the first factor, all with the depression items. Strong factor loadings for factor two, all on mania items. And then strong factor loadings on factor three, all loading on the anxiety items. Now it's important to note at this point that what this factor analysis tells us is that these items tend to group together, that they appear to be measuring 
the same thing or something similar. But these results do not speak to how well we categorize these items in the first place. So depression 1 through depression 4, these four items, we believe that these items measure depression. That's part of our theory. But the only part of the theory that we're really learning about from this output is whether these four items group together. These numbers don't speak to the correctness of our classification. So there could be another reason why these four variables loaded on the same factor. They may be measuring the same thing and that construct may not be depression. That was our theory. We put in place a theory that said that these four items measure depression, that these three items measure mania, and these three items measure anxiety. But the process of the EFA has no way of making those type of qualitative determinations. It's simply a mathematical process. So we need to use caution when interpreting this rotated factor matrix and realize the limitations of what it's telling us. So in this case, we know that these items load together, but we still don't know why they load together. We have to look at each of the items in depression one through four and mania one through three and anxiety one through three and qualitatively, subjectively, look at them and see and determine if they're actually related to the constructs of anxiety, mania, and depression. And of course, in theory, before we would have conducted an exploratory factor analysis, we would have looked carefully at these items and made sure, for example, all four of these items were measuring depression and nothing else, these three items mania and nothing else, and these three anxiety and nothing else or as close to that configuration as we could possibly get. So in conducting this exploratory factor analysis, we found that there are three factors and they do line up with the theoretical structure that we believed existed. We can see here that the lowest factor loading in all of these factor loadings would be on factor three for anxiety two for that item at 0.762. There are several guidelines for what can be the lowest factor loading that's acceptable here. Uh, 0.45 is a popular uh, setting for that factor loading value, so any value greater than 0.45. So certainly 0.762, which the, is the lowest factor loading, would be considered very good. I hope you found this video on conducting an exploratory factor analysis in SPSS to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.